Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about F-Trace mechanism, which is available since, uh, as, I b as I remember, 2.6 kernel 34 probably, um, which is really useful uh, when you don't have um, ability to, to discover crash dumps from the customers, for example, and uh, you can suggest to to add something to have trace mechanisms to, to gather more data which allows you to understand what was wrong so uh, the great thing is about f trace is that uh, it it is mostly available in most distros by default so uh, there are some config options which is enabled by default, as I said. So and that's really useful, and I'll show you why, because I have some example of uh, how I used F-Trace before. So it's located in debugfs, which is uh, mounted by default as well, so you can find it under syskernel debug. Um, and uh, under this directory, you'll find tracing. So that is the usual uh, view of this um, this directory. So many files, <laughs> but you don't. You usually need not all of them. So the basic the basic tracers uh, tracers available so you can check them uh, through available tracers file um, and mains uh, main tracers are function function graph and an app tracer so function is the default option so you can just trace functions entry points uh, func function graphs Function graph allows you to, to track entry and exit, thus uh, making a call graph. An app is useful for a different situation, um, which will be, um, which I'll show you. So it's better to start with some samples. This one is most famous script, um, how to, to trace uh, how to self-trace uh, some program or script or whatever. So the, the, the most important point that you uh, should enable tracer through tracing on, you have to, to put one to this and uh, uh, store the PID, the tracing PID to set up trace PID and that's it. So. Uh, the problem with this uh, script is that we we have a very l huge output, which is really difficult to understand unless we know what we're looking for in this output. So you can see 33,000 lines just executing um, a less command. So that's pretty useless <laughs> in my understanding. So here comes set of trace filter, which um, allows to, to add function, uh, the, which we want, we, we, which are, we are interested in. So f for example, we can just add the sys and VFS functions to set of trace filter. And as you can see, there is much lower um, output from from execution. Um, of course, we can put some modulus, I mean, to track only modulus during tracing. So here, uh, here's an example of E1000E driver. So we have only functions for that. So we don't need to, to understand, to know about um, the whole function set. So we can just pass the module name to F trace filter file. Another useful thing is F trace events. 
Um, so I put some example from the memory management. Um, so we set up a buffer, I mean, to, to, to store more data rather than default one. Uh, you can look through events subdirectory and uh, check available events. So um, to understand what, what events can be usable for you to, um, for debugging. So even we, we can just adjust um, events. As you can see, we can, for example, we can track uh, order allocations for CASWAPD. Um, so just that's the output, how it works. Um, the problem is with these, these events is they are hard-coded, uh, so they are static. And we can extract only information provided by the developer. Um, that is how it looks like in the kernel. So. Um, we have a spe specific macro, trace event, and the developer decided to just print out information which is useful for him. And that limits what we can extract uh, fr from this area. Um, and here comes the really useful one, uh, F-trace car probes. So here we can extract more useful data by using uh, car probes. They are located uh, in the same directory. So for example, if they want to, to trace something, some function, for example, path open at, um, we have to, to find the prototype of this function. Now they have to understand the registers, how the, regi the, how the parameters are passed to this function, so for x86-64, they're well-known system 5 FBI, so the registers uh, RDI, RSI, so mostly. Um, and we need this information to extract data. So for example, uh, we can extract arguments passed, uh, but we, ftrace has a specific syntax for that. As we can see, we, uh, for path op open at, we pass nd for naming data the structure, and uh, since it, since the first argument is uh, following by convention in, uh, uh, which one was that, di, right? In di register? So we pass this register. So the probe is passing car probe events when you have uh, to enable it explicitly. Otherwise, that's not going to work. And that's usually one mistake uh, from people j just to forget to enable this probe. So here is the output. As we can see, we can get some pointers, but that's mostly useless. I mean, for for this um, for this parameter, because we don't know the exact uh, content of the naming data. Uh, the good thing for another functions is that uh, is that um, ftrace allows us to to print out strings. So for, uh, for this function, we can extract um, a string for that. So ftrace has a specific syntax. So since the parameter goes second, so we, it's passed through ESI or RSI registers for, for 64 bits. And the output that now we can see um, the name passed below that. And also the thing that I uh, forget to mention, there is one uh, useful option is to dump a stack trace because without this option, we'll get just plain, uh, plain rows with a function name and that's it. 
and stack trace is very useful. So the, the same for, for another function I put here. Mm, that's how we can, there is another syntax how to access struct members. So for a super block we can, for example, extract some members. We just uh, have to pass the, the, the right of set to the register. Um, we can extract it, for example, using crash or whatever. So for, for this kernel version, that was 140. And here's the good example of the customer. Um, they found that XT4 um, file system was remounted read-only, and that's it. No core dump. Um, so you have to just guess what was wrong, because unless you don't have a stack trace, you can't figure out. And F trace helped uh, to resolve that, because we can put uh, a cup probe on this function. This is option stack trace enabled, and to figure out what was, what was wrong with that. Um, okay, the conclusion. So that's really helpful. It's F trace is, enab is enabled by default in most kernels. Um, and we don't need additional packages to install, so just navigating through uh, debugfs and to put some, uh, some values to files. Another good thing, I mean, when you're tracing some, um, something which has a, a high data rate, so you can just put the trace uh, print k functions, and they put just uh, data to the um, per CPU buffer, so we don't need to, to print K bec because otherwise that's going to be slow and the kernel can just uh, just down f from this. So and so some people do like to use trace CMD. That's a wrapper for F trace, but uh, I do find that's for me, that's enough to, to just navigating to put directly to files through CSFS. But this tool is really useful too. Um, I think that's it. So <laughs> if you have questions, please ask. Okay, thank you for it. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry if I missed it, but did you mention the trace command? Uh huh. Okay. Trace CMD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, th that's uh, F trace is only one mechanism you can use to debug. In such cases, of course, when you have a dump, that's easier to to just run crash or another analyzer to to understand what was wrong. But of course, there is also perf available to trace this. But F trace is also is very suitable to, to understand issues. And it's just a front end to F trace. Yeah. So it's not like perfect. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. So you don't you don't need to echo and and cat into all of these debug FS files. It yeah. Does it for you. Okay. Um, can you enable uh, events during boot? Uh, like I haven't used it, line? but uh, as far as I know, yes, you can. Because I have seen uh, you can enable the address filter uh, function. So, uh, but what about the events? Uh, is there a command line for that? S I believe you can, but of course you have to wait uh, while F trace subsystem is initialized. So I, I, I actually haven't used that during boot because most F traces, uh, F trace use cases I, I have experienced this was on the running kernel, not during boot. Because if you, can, uh, if you can just reboot a server, then I believe you, you have more instruments to, to analyze that. 
I mean, if you have an access to the server, for a customer server, you can just easily reboot. So yeah, I believe you can just add some print casts or whatever. Yeah, but that <laughs> needs uh, modifying code here. You can do it without modifying code. So. Yeah, th that's a good question. Not sure. I have to check that. Yeah, the, I, well, I, I just had a look, and there is a trace event uh, kernel command line option to enable event of boot. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, how about modules? So, uh, if if the filter function is uh, defined on the command line, can can they work with modules as well? Yeah, I believe so because uh, as I showed, so you you can just pass uh, a module name to the f trace filter. F trace filter, and I believe the same should work during uh, booting. Um, here you can, one example, so you have E1000E, you put the model on all the symbols automatically. Uh, have been yes, added. but at this time, these, uh, s uh, these symbols are known to F trace, uh, but during the boot, the modules are not loaded yet. So okay. when the when the filters are being processed, uh, and the, these locations will not be enabled. So, uh, will not be available in the kernel. They will be loaded once the yeah, yeah, user understand. land is initialized and so on. So, it's. Uh, I think that's the have to be has to be figured out how how that works. And uh, I have no experience during booting. But okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay.